Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Steve Sutherland with StarQuestParts.net. You guys probably know me by now. Uh, for the last six or seven years, I've been providing most of the country and really worldwide uh, access to Starion and Conquest Parts through my website, which is www.StarQuestParts.net. If you haven't seen it yet, tune into it. I'm always changing stuff up. I've got a lot of things. If I don't have it, I can find it. So hit me up if you also have questions about your cars. I'll do the best my, I can to either give you guys the answer or find the answer for you. So. I uh, just want to create this video. I do some videos on how to remove parts and uh, disassembly, reassembly of some things and other things to look for. In this video, I kind of wanted to introduce you guys to a lineup of Sterions and Conquests that kind of run the gamut from the introductory year of 1983 when it was first introduced all the way up to one of the later models. Uh, these are all personal cars of mine. It's four of them. I've got some others as well, but these were the best four that I could pick for you guys in the best condition that kind of tell you uh, the story of this particular model of vehicle. So many of you guys know some of this. I figured this would just be a cool place to put everything in one place and I'll give you guys a quick little tour. So, all right, first and foremost, this is the beginning of it all. This is a 1983 Mitsubishi Starion. Uh, the Conquest was not available in 83. It's the one year that it was not. Uh, this was a Mitsubishi only product. After this, Chrysler and Mitsubishi got together DSM to bring uh, that this particular model under the Conquest name through Chrysler into the States. Uh, this was available, kind of a low production car, but was available in the States and overseas as well. But again, this is the introductory 83 Mitsubishi Starion. Um, the 83 hood, which it's been famously called, uh, very desirable on the later model cars as well. This is the scoop hood. This only came on the 83 cars, which is why they're so hard to get. Um, you can find them every once in a while, but this is the only model that they came to from the factory and then you couldn't get them from the factory uh, for very long after that. They did have some availability at a time, but this was the flagship car that it came on. Uh, this is also the car that uh, Jackie Chan and Cannonball Run drove. It's kind of what made this car, if you want to call it famous at the beginning. I don't know if it ever really got famous, but at least it got its street cred from that movie. So kind of a cool thing. If you haven't seen it, Google it. There's videos out there. Um, so anyway, this was a, um, uh, this particular body design was also carried through 84, 85, 86 in a flat body design. Um, you'll notice here, this is 83 specific pinstriping, turbo pinstriping, that's all original. Uh, when the car uh, had one, one uh, very high quality repaint, they actually were able to save, clear coat over these graphics and save those. Um, stock was 14 inch wheels. Small wheels, they moved up to six, uh, 15s and 16s on all, all the later model cars. Um, but if you follow me around here, you'll see these are also known as 83 taillights. Comes on the 83 cars. Guys try to get these as well on the later models. They are interchangeable. Kind of cool that they did the uh, emblems on the 83s, but then kind of did the uh, decal, starting on turbo on there, which is 83 design. Um, you'll see here the earlier models had these types of side vents and these also went on the 84 and 85 cars um, But then they went ahead and changed to these in later years, which you'll see on the additional cars So most of the guys have these on the later models These were the earlier style You also notice the mirrors. These are self-adjustable on the inside um, This is only on the early model cars everything else switched to these uh, after that time All right, listen up that's the door chime. Kind of cool, listen. Everybody geeks out about this. I'm gonna let you all hear it. All right, so if you see here, um, this is the early model steering wheel and also the 83s came in what they uh, deemed some sort of Technica version at the time, which was a uh, partially digital speedometer. Um, there is an analog version of this as well, but this is all digital. And you have your digital gauge for your uh, RPMs uh, as well as your boost. And they have the analog gauges for the others there. You see, it's got the old school radio, old school HVAC, you know, slide style, uh, very different than the others, the newer versions. And uh, a longer throw gear shifter as well. And then the cool thing is if you kind of look at these seats, the early years had a turbo embossment as well. Some of them moving a little higher up, but uh, the, the early style 83, 84, 85 cars had these very, very comfortable uh, seats. Some of them came in leather as well, but I prefer the cloth. They're very comfortable and supportive, um, but the, the cool turbo embossing here. And you also had the manually mounted 
seat belts uh, to the door, which again was an 86 and earlier uh, setup when they moved to the sort of mouse track electronic belts in the latter years. So that is the 83 um, underneath the hood. If you follow me around there. This was a one year only uh, fuel injection setup. They switched over to a different throttle body setup in later years. So a little difficult to, part, to find parts and injectors and, and so on for these because they were one year specific. Same thing with your sensors. Um, it had a, a TC05 uh, 12A turbo. All these were 12A turbos for pretty much all years. But the early one used a TC05. They switched to a TD05 later. Um, this is non-intercooled. All these cars were non-intercooled up until um, 86, 87 years is when they started introducing the intercooled. Actually, there was an 85.5 flatty style that was intercooled as well. That was kind of their entry into intercooled turbos. Everything was non-intercooled before then. Uh, they still had good power, but they didn't make as much as the later years did. Um, but there's just some interesting differences that they uh, migrated to in latter years. So there's the 83 setup. You also notice it's kind of got a setback air dam. Uh, those were actually aftermarket fog lights installed there just because they had holes there with no lights. Uh, but that's a, uh, an interesting um, recessed setup there that was really only on the early 83 year. All right, now we're going to move on to the 87 flatty, flat side. Um, similar to this, no fender flares, uh, just your little ridges here over the wheel wells. But um, this is an 87 flat side. This is a Technica edition. The Technica's was a pretty cool setup where you had the... Um, the fully electronic uh, speedometer cluster versus the analog gauges. It's kind of, I think, Knight Rider back in the day. Um, it doesn't talk to you, but it's pretty, still just as cool, especially at night. Lights up uh, very bright, and you've got all your gauges bouncing and, uh, you know, going ahead and illuminating and showing you some pretty cool stuff at night. So uh, it's a technical car, pretty rare. I would say rare, uncommon. Um, not too many of these left. Most of them are analog. So uh, you still, uh, in 86, 87, they started to introduce the three-piece spoiler, you'll notice on the 83 car, uh, it's a it's bare, you have a flat back here. They went ahead and went with a three-piece spoiler in the later years, definitely in all of the uh, wide bodies, but the flatty started to gain that as well. Just a little bit sportier look. Uh, went with a little bit larger tire and a different type of, uh, different style of wheel. They also made what they call cowbell wheels, and they have one other version that they, they used as well, but this is probably one of the more common style wheels that they used on these. And they also switched over to the more modern style taillights. Again, just for comparison's sake, if you look at that, that's an 83 only. Chiclet style, what they call, sort of nicknamed after the old school gum. Um, but this is where these taillights then originated and, uh, you know, on the later years and kind of for at least the conquest went all the way through. Starion was a little bit different. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but again, flat side, um, opening this up. This was the probably one of the more common yet popular interiors due to comfort. And also these leather seats were known to wear very well compared to the ladder model seats. Um, you'll see that they changed the steering wheel uh, in these cars based on the earlier one that you saw. And there is the Technica Dash. I'm gonna go ahead and power these up for you a little bit later so you can kind of see them jumping around. Um, you know, you've got your upgraded radio. Uh, that's your, this is an automatic car. So not too many of those floating around either. And hey, it's not everybody's preference, but sometimes it's just cool to just put it in drive and drive it instead of shifting through the gears if you just wanna cruise for a day. So hey, I got a bunch of five speeds, having one automatic doesn't bother me. Uh, flip up headlights on all of these um, that's pretty much standard on all these cars and this was the introduction the 87 was the introduction into the electronic seat belt so um, you know some people have problems with these but when they work they're pretty cool some people think they're annoying but when you open the car this retracts when you close the car this powers all the way through and and uh then uh sit you in the sit you in the seat so that is an 87 flatty i'll pop the hood real quick show you what you're typically accustomed to seeing on most of these there's the engine set up again this is a uh, this is actually a non intercooled car um, so it has the old turbo it doesn't have the newer turbo that is intercooled but um, you know still gets up and goes pretty well then this year they did have an intercooled set up this one being a flatty just happens to be the non intercooled version um, but uh, yeah still fun fun to drive Gets up and goes, runs smooth. Um, you'll see here, again, 
the fully recessed air dam on the 83 flatty. And then you're seeing the migration to a little bit more sporty version, uh, front forward facing air dam on the flat sides um, in the later model years. And that happens to have the uh, smoked out fog light covers. Um, just kind of blends out, blends in well with the, uh, with the black. So 87 Conquest Technica. All right, this is kind of my life keeper. I've had this for a long time. This is my 87 wide body. Um, it's got a lot of the later model upgrades. Um, I've, I have modified this car to an extent, but at the same time kept it pretty purist. Uh, I know a lot of guys do swaps on these cars. That's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I've pretty much stayed purist with most of the stuff that I've had. Um, one reason is just because I don't know how to swap them. So some of you guys do. If, you, if that's your thing, then go for it. There's uh, guys making some pretty nasty power out there with these, with the two JZs and the LS1s and 4G63s, which is almost still a little purist on that side of things. But um, so that's, that's a good way to go. But if you maintain these things right, you've got a good motor or you rebuild your motor, these things are still uh, pretty capable of making decent power and actually being a lot of fun in stock form with some upgrades. So um, anyway, this is 87 wide body, 83 hood. Um, with the vents color matched to the uh, powder coated wheel centers. Um, I've got the, uh, the one piece 8889 air dam, which is down here. So again, you'll notice when they move from the flat side to the wide body, they change that again. Uh, much more aggressive feel. Uh, it was a three piece spoiler in 87 and 88, 89. They went to a one piece, just less prone to breaking and cracking. So that's what this one's got. Um, this has the SHP wheels which is a 16 by nine inch deep dish rear and then a 16 by eight inch front. Stock is 16 by eight and 16 by seven. So these are kind of preferred. It gives you a wider tire size, um, just gives a little bit more meat on it. And, uh, and I think looks a little bit better. So, um, but the eights and sevens are very nice as well. Turbo door handles, which was an early model 86 and prior option on these cars. Um, this is a sunroof car. Here's your automatic belts. Now, this interior I sourced, this is a one-year only special edition interior. They came on, I believe, only certain 88 cars. It was a special sport cloth hybrid leather option from the factory. There's not a whole lot of them out there. This is my favorite interior by far. I actually had these seats redone, but they were able to retain the actual cloth centers. And you'll see the door panels have the matching uh, material as well. It kind of looks like old school Atari, which I think is pretty neat. Um, this actually was a white, believe it or not, this is a white on burgundy car. For some reason, Mitsubishi and Chrysler did not make this car in a white on black, which is which is polarizing to most of us. But if you want a white on black car, you got to swap the whole interior. I did that years ago uh, when I was first getting back into these things. And uh, that was a nerve wracking process, pulling two complete interiors. Uh, every nut and bolt and trim piece added two different cars and then having basically two shells to try to figure out how it all went back together but it ended up working out and uh, at the end of the day it's a, i think it's a cool white on black color combo so uh five speed um some of the uh upgrades on this um i've got the they used to make this as a guy that used to uh develop these basically a super star a super style uh, rear hatch upper hatch spoiler um so i added that it's got um it's got a short shifter in it. It's got, let me pop the hood here. Again, mostly stock with upgrades. It's got a rebuilt motor. It's got a Mitsubishi script valve cover. This came just on the Stereons, so I had that powder coated. This has got a hard pipe kit that um, replaces this factory uh, fabric hard pipes. Um, I have a 16G turbo. I've got a better cooling system. That turbo's up to about 17 PSI right now. So I'm probably at about 375 or 275 horsepower, give and take. It's 187 from the factory. Um, blow off valve, et cetera, et cetera. So a variety of upgrades here. I've got the uh, popular D2 coilovers. That way I was able to sort of adjust the stance of the car. So that affects the ride a little bit. You know, it gets rid of the worn out shocks that I had to begin with. And uh, also another group member makes this, uh, um, this uh, upper strut bar, I've got the front one and the rear one as well, as well as uh, better injectors, adjustable fuel pressure regulator and everything that goes with that. So there's some other things that I'm missing, but long story short, it's still primarily a factory car with tasteful upgrades that, uh, you know, is a lot of fun to drive, has quite a bit of power, but, um, you know, also isn't gonna get away from you too bad. So, um, all right, 
sunroof car as well. All right, now on to the last one. In 88 and 89, they made some changes. Again, same body style, uh, same drivetrain, but they, they went ahead with some beefier uh, components. They had a better transmission. They had six bolt axles, rear axles, instead of the four bolt that the 87s and under had. Um, they upgraded a couple of the ignition components and um, a handful of other uh, improvements. But this is an 88. This is a modified 88, uh, the key being multi-port injection. So I'm gonna go ahead and start under the hood on this one. This is a fully built motor with forged internals. It's got a Gato multi-port intake. So it's got four, four injector system instead of the stock uh, two injector throttle body setup. Uh, so this is a much more reliable setup. It's considered a major upgrade for these cars really how they should have been done from the factory because the fuel system at the end of the day is really uh, was under designed for these cars it's one of the weak points so going multi-port uh in lieu of doing a swap is your most um you know you can make big pretty big power with that upgrade and uh still keep your factory set up especially if you're going to go with a, bu a built motor um big turbo upgraded cooling system a lot of other upgrades under the hood you can see here some of the electronics were upgraded as well to kind of get away from the uh, the older fusible link system. Um, this one is a low to mid uh, 400s as far as horsepower. Um, we had it on a dyno, it did very well. It pulls hard, it'll spin the tires pretty quick on you. But at the same time, it's got the reliability of, um, of what you see here. So um, take a quick look around this. Again, 83 hood. There's a member that sells, a uh, Motocam that sells these uh, the upgraded hood struts so that you not, do not have to use the factory prop handle. It's kind of nice to just, you let go of it, there it goes, kind of the way modern cars do. Um, SHP wheels on this car, turbo door handles. Uh, this is called uh, Pepper Gray Metallic. So it's a custom color, along with the uh, stripe kit that you see on the hood. That's actually, those are actually painted stripes on the hood and on the top of the car. Uh, those are not decals. This is another, you know, fairly sought after type of interior. The 8889, they switched to this uh, Recaro style interior, like the one I just showed you before as well. Um, has the bolsters, so they're, they're pretty comfortable. But this is the Sport Cloth interior. A um, little bit tough to find, very comfortable, much more comfortable than the leather. And uh, this also has the manual belts conversion. So you'll notice this is an 88 car, but it does not have the electronic seat belts. Instead, it's got the conversion to the more, or, the less prone to issues manual seatbelt setup. So that's kind of a desirable um, modification to get away from the troublesome aspect that some people run into with the automatic belts, which is a pain to fix. So this conversion kind of eliminates all that. Um, you'll see also the different steering wheel. That's an 8889 steering wheel. It's a different design. Um, this one's got a custom standalone Link ECU, fully tuned. Uh, with a CAN bus gauge that gives me all my data um, that I need to know while I'm driving the car, and so on. So, um, the Stereons also came, this is just a small detail, they came with a turbo embossed hatch. Now, you can get decals to do this as well, but this is an original Starion hatch. The Conquest hatch glass did not come embossed at all. Um, and then you also noticed the different taillights I've shown you. You had the chiclet style on the 83, you had the Conquest style on the last two. These are Starion specific taillights. So if you look at these versus that design on the white Conquest, you'll see the differences between the two options. Um, everybody's got their own opinion on which one's nicer. Most guys, you know, like to try to, to get really nice condition Starion lights to do their swaps, but I'm, I'm kind of impartial to both of them. I think they both have their their own uh, their own look on the car, and I think they both look, look right at home. So I don't really have a preference one way or the other. Um, so again, this is a quick walk through time, um, 83, 87 flatty, 87 wide body, 88 modified. That's kind of, other than a couple that were in between, again, the 85.5 flatty was an intercooled option of the flat side car. It had some different interior options. There weren't a, weren't a lot of differences there other than it had five bolt wheels instead of the old four bolt. But this is kind of represents really, uh, each general model through the lifespan of 1983 to 1989 with these cars and the differences that, uh, you know, kind of, it, it showed kind of the, the journey that they came through from their first obsession from the Starion 
to the conquest. So um, last thing, a couple of things. Uh, production numbers are listed online. 89 uh, was the last year, probably the most sought after car. 89 Starion was like a unicorn. There's 170 some of those made. You don't see those rarely ever. Um, and the 83s, you don't see many of those either as well. So um, 87 is the most common. Um, and uh, again, with the right modifications, there's, got, there's plenty of guys driving these in stock form that have just maintained them well. And they're still really, really fun cars to drive. With some basic modifications, you can add 50 to 75 horsepower, and you have a wide band that enables you to keep your eyes on your air fuel ratios and things of that nature so that you can make sure that you're staying within range on that. Um, you can have a lot of fun with these cars and make power without too much of a, a major investment. So, um, look, man, these things are sleepers. They didn't get, they didn't get the attention that the uh, Supras and the Nissans and the uh, you know all the other cars of this particular era got. There was some cool marketing behind them at the time, but they just, they were a little bit expensive. They are a little bit of an on-ball, I guess, in comparison to what was out there um, and that were much more mass produced than these, but they have their place in time. They're getting more appreciated and have over the last several years, which is good to see. But, um, you know, if you don't have one already, go ahead and grab one. They're, they're kind of getting a little scarcer these days and um, they're one of the most, uh, eye-catching cars on the road that will generate more conversations than most of the gas stations. So anyway, once again, my name's Steve. Uh, welcome to StarQuest Toyland. If you have any questions, you can hit me on my website, www.starquestparts.net. Hit me on email, shoot me a text, give me a call. I'm available for any questions that you have. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.